In today's quick Thursday tip, we're going to talk about how to get Microsoft Forms data over to a SharePoint list, and we're going to use Power Automate to do that. But what I really want to focus on is how I'm going to create the SharePoint list we want to get the data to. We're going to use the Create with Excel, which is a little bit new from the last time I did a video like this. So I thought it was pretty fun. thought I'd show you guys. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. In today's quick Thursday tip, or cutie as I like to call them, we're going to dive into creating a SharePoint list from Excel data from Microsoft Forms. You're like, whoa, Shane, this is not like your normal thing. Um, well, actually, it kind of is. So one of the things a lot of my Power Apps friends miss is that we use Forms a lot around here, right? Because Microsoft Forms are a great way to get information from an anonymous source or from someone outside your org. So a lot of times, like we might use Forms as an uh, ingress to get some data in, then we use Power Automate to go process that data, do something, and so then it shows up in our Power um, Power Apps. So it's really is a more integral part of what we do around here than you probably expect. So as part of doing that in the last project, like the last time I made a video on it, I had to build the whole SharePoint list by hand, which was kind of easy because there's only like five columns, but it still wasn't a lot of fun. And so when I had to do it this recent time, I'll show you the form we have to do it for, there was probably 40 columns. And I was like, Oh my God, I do not want to do that. So I was like, wait a minute, I think there's a better way. So what I want to really concentrate on here with you guys today is I'm going to show you the form and I'm going to show you kind of the end, but I want to show you how I do the uh, SharePoint to Excel or the Excel to SharePoint to create the actual list and save me so much time. Cool? All right, let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, so over here on the desktop, we're going to use our new uh, screener, right? So anytime someone applies to Power Apps 911, we have a screener that they walk through, you know, they fill it out. And then here you're going to see, you know, I've got full name. So I've got some text columns. I got some choice columns. I even have this crazy Likert thing because I thought that was a, what helped us do what we needed to do, but it also kind of shows you what's going on here. So I did that and I did a fake response this morning. And so as part of this response, like I made a copy of this. I'm not using our production data. I can't show you applicants info. That'd be bad. But so now that I've got this working, right? I'm like, hey, yay, I'm getting the data I want. Now I need to get it somewhere we can use it. As a company, we found out that we do not enjoy looking at this data in Excel. It is a pain in the butt. So what we're going to do instead is I'm actually going to start with open in Excel. This is going to download the file. And so once this file is downloaded, I'm like, all right, well, let's open that up, take a look. So here you can see that Excel just has one column for everything. And if you kind of work across like even all those Likert. So Maybe 40 was an exaggeration. I don't know. That's a lot though. There's a lot of data here. So now what I need to do is I need to make a SharePoint list to store this data. So to do that, I could go over to SharePoint and make everything piece by piece. Boo. Or what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to site settings or site content. And so up here at the top on the new, if you say new list, they have this lovely little from Excel. Woo. So if we say from Excel, we can then say, I want to upload a file and I'm going to grab this one that I just uploaded. So it's the second second or no, it's just, it's the first second night, whatever. Well, either one of these are the same exact file. I just, I did a practice run this morning. So this puts it out in my SharePoint site. And then what it's looking for is it found a table of data, which was already in there for me. So I didn't do anything, right? You saw, I just grabbed Excel and it was there. And so now it lets me map out the columns. Now there's a couple of little nuances here. I want to cover with you guys. But you can see that, um, first off, the title, right? So it's not going to import the ID. We don't need that. Cool. It's this, hey, I'm going to make this first column the title. And then it shows it a bunch of numbers. Well, the reason for that is because date and times in our dear friend Excel are numbers. And so by default, it's like, oh, that must just be a big number you want to use. No, I want to change that to a date and time. So I can just hit the drop down, do date and time here. I'm like, all right, awesome. That looks good. So then I'll go over here, like, oh, completion time, same thing, date and time. Wait a minute, this one changed back. Why? Because it knows it has to have a title column, so it keeps defaulting to the first column when I don't have one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip down here to the right a little bit, and I'm going to use their full name as the title. So I'm going to set this as title. Now if I go back over here, I can quit playing the game. It'll quit going back and forth. So now both of these are date and time. Great. Um, their email is marked as anonymous. So this isn't the email that I prompted them for. This is the email that if my form wasn't an anonymous form, because when you create a, a Microsoft form, you can make them anonymous or authenticated. I wanted anonymous. 
So I'm just not going to import this field. All mine would always say that, so there's no reason to pull that in. The name field, this is another field they use internally. We don't need, do not import. And so then now we're into the fields that I actually made. So title for full name, email address, and we can kind of scroll through these, but they all look pretty good to me, right? They're all what I would expect them to be. And I'm just kind of doing a, a validation that, you know, we're going to dump it in a single line of text for most of these. I'm not trying to do like stats and things, right? I really am just trying to literally co collect these people's responses so that when they fill this out, we can get a feel for, you know, who are they? What do they do? You know, this is how, how we make our decisions around who we want to talk to next is what do they fill out in this form? So that all looks good. We'll do a next here. Now, another thing that got me the first time I did this, I'm like, oh, Power Apps getting to know a little bit. Yeah, that seems fine. But if you scroll all the way over here, they put a bunch of garbage on the end. Boo. So I'm just going to start deleting out a bunch of that. Oh, I went the wrong way. Control Z. A little bit more about you. So I put my cursor here, hold down the shift, hit end, and then hit delete. There we go. So that pulled it all in. And then I'm just going to type demo at the end because I don't want to overwrite anything. I could also have a description. I can show my site navigation. It doesn't matter. But now we say create. And after a few seconds, it created the list and imported the data. So if you're just trying to do a one-time import, you'd be done. But in reality, people fill these things out. Like three people filled it out at midnight last night. And so I want those to come in an automated way. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to go back to our friend Flow. And we're going to let Flow facilitate this. Now, over here on the flow side, I'm going to say create, but I'm actually going to start from a template. So I'm going to search for forms. And the reason I'm just starting from a template, you know me, I usually don't like templates. This one's exactly what I want. So I don't have any beefs with it, so I always use it. So record form responses in SharePoint. Sounds great. After a few seconds, it validated all my permissions. So I'm going to say continue. And now it's like, all right, well, what form do I want to pull in? I want to pull in the um, getting to know you too, right? That's the copy I made for you guys. And so then remember forms are going to pull that data even though, and it's going to trigger every time a new response is submitted. So when that guy or girl at midnight filled it out, you know, the, it triggered, it said, Hey, I got to go. Now it still pulls the data in as a table. And so since it pulls it as a table, it needs to apply to each to go through the table, even though there'll only be one record every time nuances. And so when one triggers, the first thing you have to do is go get the data. So it's going to get the response data. So where do I want to get the data from? Well, I want to get it from that same form but it will use the ID of the record that triggered it. So it'll get the right record. And then we're gonna say, hey, I wanna create an item in SharePoint. Now keep in mind, we're doing this in SharePoint because it's easy and fun, but I've done this for a lot of people in a lot of different places. So you don't have to write this to SharePoint. Just go to Power Apps Videos. And then what list do I wanna write that to? And so down here we should have, there you go, our demo list we just created. And so then now this populates all those columns and so then you'd go here and be like, all right, well, now I'm just going to use dynamic content. So for title, we wanted that to be their full name, right? So we'll put, we need to find their name in here. There's full name. And so then if we want to pull in start time, you know, we've got these different timestamps. Um, so we would kind of work our way through here. But I think if we do this, let's just check. So let's do start time. Oh, what did they call it in the Excel? And so actually now I remember, right, start time and completion time, they don't come over from the form object. I don't need them anyway. I don't care how long it took people to fill these out. Um, submission time does, but I didn't set up a column to pull that in. So no big deal. It wasn't actually something I wanted anyway, but I was going to show you kind of how that would pull in. Let's go to a field that we know is there. So email address, we're to search for email. And so you remember you want email address. That's the name of the question I did. Res responder's email, this would have been that anonymous field. So you might have to play with these a little bit to figure out what fields you are or not getting, but you could just go through here now and you just add all the dynamic content in here piece by piece by piece. And then every time someone fills out your survey, they will magically appear over here. The other thing that we did, just so you know, is we added an action at the bottom that also sends us an email that says, hey, you know, this all worked, uh, or you know, that somebody new filled it out and we sent us back a link because what we can do down here was add an action. We did Outlook. And then we said we want to send an email. So send an email V2. And then we would send it to Chewy or whoever we wanted at the company to get it. Uh, but more importantly, it's a new person. Down here in the body, what I was using was from the create item, right? Well, after we create that SharePoint item, I was grabbing the link to item. And so then that way I could actually email the links. I could just click on the email and go look at the record over in SharePoint 
Because then we also added additional columns where I have to make little notes about, you know, oh, I like their wit or, ooh, you know, whatever. But all the process that we go through, it's all there. So, so there you go. There is a quick look at this. The main thing I want you guys to take out of this was the, um, you know, the Excel creation process. I kind of skipped that last time. If you are looking, I will post a link to another video somewhere up on the screen right now. That is the first time I did this and I did it in kind of slower, more detail on the uh, you know, the actual power automate business solution side. Whereas here, really the focus was just about how fast could we get this out? Because a lot of times that's what you're after, right? I got to collect this data. I just need this dumped into SharePoint. I don't need to do anything fancy with it. Just get it to SharePoint as fast as I can. So that's what this video was. If you have any questions, comments, any of that fun stuff, leave them down below, right? Ideas for future videos. I'm always looking for those. I'm always asking on Twitter as well. So if you're a Twitter person, you should be following me so you can check that out. Um, also keep in mind that if you want to, you know, uh, watch this and all the other videos, we've got a bunch of different options. So you can go over to training.powerapps911.com and look at the Power Apps curated library. You can download the videos. Sometimes there's a working app you can download, not with this particular video, but some of those have those as well. And we run a bunch of live training classes. That's what I'm teaching this week. So cool. All right. With that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.